nothing. And objectively, I wish I was telling you that I was there to encourage him and I was trying to speak life into him. No, this is my genuine assessment of my son. I looked at him and I said, you know, you, you honestly, you don't, it doesn't matter how you wear the hat. You make the hat. Look at your face. You got a million dollar face, son. And he's like, you know what, dad? And I said, yes. And I thought this was a good thing. Anybody know what I mean? Like, I thought it was going to be a good thing. And he goes, you know what, dad? Sometimes... I think I came to preach today. That wasn't that funny. Um, how, how many parents do we have in the house? Last week I got to speak about Selah, but how many parents do we got in the house? Can you make some noise? Um, how many happy parents in the house? Any, any happy parents? Um, I think that God speaks to us through our children all the time, but one of the things that I've learned about our children and any parents, parents, are you with me? Parents, let me see your hands one more, one more time. How many would agree that there is something about our kids? I mean, they have this unique ability. I dare say a gift to take things for granted. Any parents go, mm -hmm. like they have this amazing ability to take things for granted. Uh, exhibit A, I literally went, this happened to me the other day. I literally went into my living room to find the lights on the TV on, and the person that was laying on the couch all day prior to me entering the room had exited the building. In other words, they left the lights on, they left the TV on, and they walked out as if there was nobody, as if they had some unlimited source of electricity and nobody needed to pay for My mom used to say, yo no soy casado con con Edison. Anybody know what I... <laughs> They have this unique ability, but I think my son has taken it to the next level because the other day we were in the car and he was driving and he's like, Dad, I need to talk to you about something because I need advice. I don't know how I should wear this hat. Should I wear it facing forward or should I wear it backwards? I don't know. I, like I need to, and I had this conversation with my son. I said, listen, son, I need to share this with you. And, and I'm being honest with you, Bishop. This, listen to me clearly. There are some people in life that they need to the answer to this question because the hat makes them. But you, my son, let me tell you something about you. You could wear it backwards. You could wear it facing forward. You could wear it to the side. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because look at your face. In other words, the hat doesn't make you. You make the hat, you handsome, good-looking thing. You know, I thought, if I'm looking at this objectively, I'm looking at my son, and I'm, and I'm looking at this direction, and I just thought that I had some affirmation from my son, and objectively, I wish I was telling you that I was there to encourage him, and I was trying to speak life into him. No, this is my genuine assessment of my son. I looked at him, and I said, you know, you, you honestly, you don't, it doesn't matter how you wear the hat. You make the hat. Look at your face. You got a million-dollar face, son. And he was like, you know what, Dad? And I said, yes, and I thought this is a good thing. Anybody know what I mean? Like, I thought it was going to be a good thing. And he goes, you know what, Dad? Sometimes I just think you're too supportive. <laughs> to which I say, <laughs> someone shout, taken for granted. Hey, Pastor Ro here, and I want to hit the pause button for a moment just to let you know about how you can connect as well as partner up to support our ministry. It's only going to take 30 seconds of your time, and then you can go back to watching the rest of this video. Here's the first one. If you need prayer, give us an opportunity to pray for you by visiting prayforme.kuhau.com and submit your prayer request. Number two, become a Patreon partner. You can become a Patreon partner for as low as $1. You can find all the details in the description and you can find our merchandise link there as well. And here's the last one. If you are looking for a church community, visit us at kuhau.com slash new. Let us know a little bit about yourself so that we can plug you in to our church family. Okay, now let's get back to the video. I, I think it's so easily when we read these verses, I, I took them for granted. I think it's so easily that I, as I read uh, Paul's introduction, we can easily take it for granted. But not only did I just skim by it or kind of overlooked it, I, I think the content that was in it was also taken for granted. The content that we see in verse 1 and in verse 2 is, is, is gifts that God has given us that so easily and so often we can take it for granted. Now, God has given us so many spiritual gifts 
God has blessed us with the spiritual gift of wisdom and the word of knowledge. And he has given us uh, the gift of healing. Anybody grateful that God is a good gift giver? That God didn't just save us. That God didn't just rescue us. That God didn't just forgive us and die for our sins. He says, I'm going to give you presents and I'm going to give you gifts like if it was Christmas. I'm going to give you this gift of singing and this gift of worshiping and this gift of leadership and this gift of administration. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that God didn't just rescue me. He could have just rescued me and that would have been okay. But he says, I'm also going to bless you with some spiritual gifts gifts and spiritual promises and spiritual blessings. Anybody grateful in this place that God is a good gift giver? If you know what I'm saying, make some noise in this place. He's a, he's a good gift giver, but I also think that it's so easy for us to take some of the essential gifts that he has given us for granted. And it's not that we're... It's not that we're, we don't know what's happening. I just think that there, there comes a time that we just kind of get used to and get familiar. Next thing you know, you'll be looking at your dad talking about, you're too supportive. It's so, it's so easy to take some of the things that the Apostle Paul introduces in verse 1 and 2 for granted. And one of the things that he, he says is, and here's the first thing that I think that we can easily, as God's children, we could take it for granted. This is one of them. I want to read it to you. It says, Dear friends in Colossae, my name is Paul, and I have, cho- I have been chosen. <sighs> there it goes right there. I have been chosen by someone. I have been chosen by Jesus Christ to be, in a, uh, to be his apostle. I love the personal connotation there. Not just to be an apostle, but to be his apostle. In other words, you belong to him. He says, I have not only chosen you, but you belong to me. I have not only selected you, but you belong to me. And I like the Apostle Paul. We can just read this introduction and just forget about the fact that he's declaring emphatically, hey, my name is Paul, and and I'm a Roman citizen, but I am chosen by God. I've been chosen by his will. And I think the first gift that we can easily take for granted, if we're being honest today, is the gift of purpose. Hey, thank you for watching this video. And if you have found any value from it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified anytime we release anything new. And if you're interested in more videos like this one, I want to recommend this one to you. Make sure you like it, comment, share it with the world. And last but not least, I want to thank all our Patreon partners. It's because of you we can keep all our content free and share God's love with the world. Remember J1335, love is our logo.